Hi grade nines. Today we are going to focus on quadrilaterals and more on the properties of the quadrilaterals and the theory related to it. As I said in the previous lesson, geometry involves theory. If you do not know the theory and the theorems, then you will not be able to answer the questions. Now, in your textbook on page 145, you will see, as you can see, I've photocopied this from your textbook. You will see something like this. And then on page 149, you have this. So, this page is the six quadrilaterals displayed here that we are going to study. And this page has an addition of properties for the quadrilaterals on page 145. Right, so I'm going to start firstly with what you know. And please bear with me, there's lots of talking here and it's theory. I'm going to go over one or two of the shapes and then I'd expect you to study this. You need to know these pages, especially page 149. In fact, you don't have to worry about page 145 because the same concepts are indicated here on page 149. So this should be your mind map. You should be able to draw a mind map for all your quadrilaterals. A mind map is basically you have a, uh, it's like a flow chart where you have a, a central point and then you have branches coming out of it. So if you have the central point being the quadrilateral, you can have the properties on the branches. You can do it in whatever way you want to, as long as you understand all the properties or you know all the properties and what they mean. Now, what are properties? I'm using the word quite often. Properties are characteristics, so they are facts that makes a shape a shape, or it defines a shape. So let's look at number one, a parallelogram. So I'm going to look at this one. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is a shape bounded by four straight lines. As you know, a shape bounded by three straight lines is a triangle. A quadrilateral is a shape bounded by four straight lines. Then you get a shape bounded by five straight lines, which is a pentagon. Then you get the hexagon and so on. You go, it goes on and on and on. But our focus is on a quadrilateral. So the most important characteristic of a quadrilateral or the general characteristic of a quadrilateral is that it has four straight lines. It's a shape bounded by four straight lines. And the interior angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. Now, on this page, you would see you have the diagram. You have the definition of what is illustrated in the diagram. You have information given about the angles. And you have information given about the sides. Okay. So... Now let's look at it, and I'm sure by now you all know how to mark off the properties. I'm hoping you do. If you don't, you need to tell us so we can help you. These arrowheads indicate parallel lines. The vertical lines show equal sides. The two circles here are showing that these two angles are equal, and then because A and B are not equal, we just use another symbol to illustrate equal angles. You can use whatever you want, as long as you are showing the opposite angles are equal and the opposite sides are equal and parallel. So a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of opposite sides parallel. So that is one pair and that is one pair. So those are the two pairs of opposite sides parallel. The interior angles of a quadrilateral, well, the interior adds up to 360 degrees. In a parallelogram, the opposite angles are equal. As you can see here, the opposite angles are equal. And that is what is indicated here. What do you know about the sides of a quadrilateral, a parallelogram? So now our focus is on the parallelogram. The opposite sides are parallel and the opposite sides are equal. Now the properties are important because when you get to a question like in tomorrow's exercise, you will see some of the questions may require you to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And you are only able to prove that if you know what the properties of a parallelogram are. So please, you've got to learn all of these properties. And you will be getting a quiz on geometry, and a lot of theory will be there. So I expect you to learn your theory all the time, every day. Read your theory. Understand the theory. Don't memorize. Understand the properties. Now I'm going to move on to page 149. 
we've seen that we're dealing with the parallelogram. This page brings up diagonals. Another important concept. A diagonal, what is a diagonal? It's drawn from one vertex and it go, it's a straight line drawn from one vertex across to the other side. So a parallelogram has two diagonals. Okay? They are not equal, but they do bisect. What does the word bisect mean? Bisect in maths mean bisect each other. Divide into two equal parts. Bicycle, bisect, binomial, it means two. And as you can see here, so let me get another color pen. This line and that line. So this diagonal cuts that diagonal into two equal parts as indicated in the diagram. And the center here at E is the point of intersection of the diagonals. So the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Important to know that that line is equal to that line. So if you have a triangle here, you can see that that line and that line are not equal. Okay? But this line is parallel to that line. So that angle and that angle will be equal. And so on. So you are also applying your knowledge of parallel lines. So the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal, as we already know. The opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel and equal. So the new addition to the properties, as in comparison to page 145, is the diagonal property. So from now on, we will focus on page 149. What you can do is, after you go through all of the notes on page 149, put page 149 away, take out this page 145, and just draw the diagonals in and mark all the properties just to see if you understand it. That gives you an indication of whether you know the properties. Or if you don't want to do that, take your workbook and start from scratch. Draw each shape and mark all the properties. Now we have the rhombus. The rhombus is very similar to a parallelogram, but um, there are a few differences. A rhombus has all four sides equal, or we say adjacent, the sides next to each other are equal. The diagonals of a rhombus intersect at 90 degrees. Very important concept to remember. The diagonals of a parallelogram, they bisect, but they don't bisect at 90 degrees. A rhombus does. And when you do construction, or when you did construction, you would understand why. The diagonals of a rhombus bisects its angles. So as you can see here, a is divided into two equal parts. C is divided into two equal parts. So is B and so is D. But with a parallelogram, you didn't see that happening. So the angles are not bisected in a parallelogram. The diagonals in a rhombus bisects the angles. Okay, please remember, important. And then the other properties are the same. The opposite sides are parallel and the opposite sides are equal. A rectangle, so we say normally, a parallelogram is a sleeping rectangle. They have similar characteristics, but they also differ. The difference, the major difference, is that a rectangle is fixed. It has four fixed 90 degree angles. A parallelogram doesn't. So angle A, C, D, and E change depending on the angle. For a rectangle, the angles do not change. So which means that that distance from A to C will always be the same as the distance from B to D because it's four 90 degree angles fixed. So the diagonals in a rectangle are equal as opposed to a parallelogram and a rhombus. A rhombus and a parallelogram do not have equal diagonals because their angles are not fixed. It's not fixed values. A rectangle and a square have 90 degree angles. They will not change, so their diagonals will be equal. So another task for you can be to understand the properties is to write down the similarities between the pro uh, quadrilaterals, write down the differences between the quadrilaterals. All of that would help you. It's, it's actually very important to understand the difference in all the properties and quadrilaterals. Now the rectangle, same properties as a parallelogram where opposite sides are equal and parallel. The diagonals are equal, but the diagonals do not bisect at 90 degrees. The diagonals bisect each other. As you can see, uh, these bisected parts are all the same length because the diagonals are equal. 
Okay, so that's the rectangle. If you look at the square, a square has similar properties to a rectangle. It also has similar properties to a rhombus. Now, a square is similar to the rhombus because all four sides are equal. A square is similar to the rectangle because the four 90 degree angles. Okay, a square is similar to a rectangle again because of the diagonals being equal. A square is similar to the rhombus because the diagonals bisect at 90 degrees and the diagonals bisect the angles. Now because the angles in a square are 40, uh, sorry, 90 degrees, bisect means each angle is divided into two equal parts. So it is given that 45, 45, each little section will be 45. And this is only in a square because it's fixed 90 degree angles that are bisected, divided into two equal parts. That takes care of the square. Everything that I'm saying to you is here. So what I'd like you to do after this lesson is to go through your textbook, look at every single point, look at the diagram, draw the diagrams and write down the notes. Now, this is a trapezium. A trapezium is slightly different from the four quadrilaterals discussed. And if you look at it, the diagonals of a trapezium intersect but don't bisect each other. Okay, intersect meaning they cross each other, but they do not bisect, meaning that line is not equal to that line, and that line is not equal to that line. For obvious reasons, the shape of a, a trapezium is completely different. The opposite sides are not equal, and there's only one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. So that property of the diagonals bisecting each other cannot apply in a trapezium. An important property of a tra trapezium is that it will always have one pair of opposite sides parallel. AB a, can equal to CD, but not always. If you have that situation, then it becomes an isosceles trapezium. Okay? But as you get through the questions, you would come across different types of trapeziums. <coughs> Excuse me. And then moving on to the kite. The kite is also an interesting quadrilateral. It's different to the other quadrilaterals in many ways. Adjacent means AD and CD, those sides are equal. AB and BC are equal. Now it has two diagonals. The diagonals are not equal. But this diagonal bisects those angles, meaning those two dots are showing you that those angles are equal. And those two arcs are showing you that angle B is divided into two equal parts. But angle D is not equal to angle B. However, if you fold the kite on this line, angle A will equal to angle C. So it's symmetrical on that line, but it's not symmetrical on that line. So watch the kite. The kite can be very confusing. A common thing is, a common characteristic though, is that the diagonals intersect at 90 degrees. AE is equal to AC. So that diagonal is bisected, but not that. So BD bisects AC because AE is equal to AC. And again, you've got to learn all the properties to remember them. Draw the diagrams, read the theory, and you will be fine. I guarantee you, you will be fine. Right, grade nines, as I've said, today was more a theory lesson going over all of this. I don't want to bombard you with information, but I've just briefly summarized the shapes for you and just highlighted what the textbook refers to. As I said, these are beautiful notes. Instead of me typing them out all over again, refer to your textbook. It's there. It's beautifully put. It's, it's separated into diagonals, angles, and sides. So if we ask you about properties, you should be able to tell us what the properties are. Now, I've got a little task here, and I'm going to do, do them with you. So there's a tape. I like this because it actually gives you a good insight into all the properties to see whether you actually understand the properties. So... I'm going to upload this for you, and I'm going to deliberately put two on a page. I'll do the first one with you, so I'll do the, do the entire worksheet with you. What I'd like you to do is, you do the worksheet again, but do not look at my answers. Use my answers to check against yours, just to see if you understand all the different properties. Right, so let's go over this worksheet. So what you have to do is, there is a list of properties here. 17 properties are listed. All of them do not apply to all of the quadrilateral. One property may apply to all, 
or one may apply to none of them. Okay, so they may share a property, so let's go through it. Interior angles sum to 360. Now, all of these are quadrilaterals, so all of them would have their interior angles adding up to one, 360 degrees. All angles are right angles. No. Only the square and the rectangle. And if you can't remember it, try and do this without looking at your worksheet. But if you feel you have to look at your textbook, then you can go to this page 149. Okay. All sides are equal. So that only applies to a square and to a rhombus. Make sure we are taking the correct columns. So let's double check square and rhombus. At least two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. Now, what does adjacent mean? Now, before you tick, if you look, there is a pattern here. So they start with the general information. Now, if you look at three, four, five, they're talking about sides. Six, seven, eight are talking about, six and seven are talking about parallel sides. So read all the properties first before you just tick. It, tick. So the most appropriate property at least two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. Both pairs of opposite sides are equal. At least one pair of opposite sides parallel. So both pairs of opposite sides are equal would be the square, the rectangle. Now this is quite tricky. The rhombus, the parallelogram. Okay, both pairs of opposite sides are equal. At least Two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. What does that mean? At least two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. That means that falls to the square and the rhombus. It can't be the rectangle or the parallelogram. At least one pair opposite sides is parallel. One pair. So that has to be the trapezium. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, so that is the square, the rectangle, the rhombus, and the parallelogram. At least two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. Actually, if I think about it, that would be the kite. This would come off. Although, if you did put it there, it can, because we've covered sides in question 5. So I would say the kite would be more appropriate for question 4. Okay? Because at least means minimum. Where are we? At least one pair opposite angles is equal. Both pairs. So this one at least again has to be the kite. Because the kite has only one pair of opposite sides equal. Both pairs of opposite angles are equal. Both pairs of opposite angles are equal. Let's think about it the square, the rectangle, the rhombus, the parallelogram. At least one diagonal is bisected at right angles. At least is telling you only one, so that has to be the kite. Both diagonals are bisected. Diagonals bisect each other. Sorry, I missed out number 10. So which diagonals do not bisect at right angles? It is the rectangle and the parallelogram. Both diagonals are bisected at right angles. That is the square and that is the rhombus. Diagonals are equal in length, that is the square, and that is the rectangle. Diagonals bisect at least one pair of opposite interior angles. Diagonals bisect both pairs of opposite interior angles. So, at least one pair, that's the kite. Both pairs, which shape has their diagonals bisecting their angles? It would be the square and the rhombus. In a parallelogram and rectangle, the angles are not bisected. Be careful of that. All angles between diagonals and sides are 45 degrees. That is only applicable to the square. Number of axes of symmetry. Now, if you think about it, you have to think about how many lines for each shape. So, if you think about a square, a square will have a vertical or horizontal and the two diagonals. So that's four. Four lines of symmetry. A rectangle will have two. A rhombus? How many sides would a rhombus have? Let's think about it. The two diagonals. Will it be four? So how about this? What I'd like you to do is, before I give you all the answers, I'd like you to 
figure out this, this, that, and that. I've given you the first two. Remember, lines of symmetry is the line that divides the shape symmetrically. So when you fold on that line, the, the halves or quarters must map onto each other. So you work out that, and we'll discuss this in the next lesson. Okay, grade nines, there is work on Google Classroom for you. Please look at the work schedule daily to get your actual exercise and which questions you need to do. And remember, the lesson after you in the lesson after you will find the memo for the previous exercise. So please remember to mark your work before watching the video for the next lesson. Okay, bye bye. See you tomorrow. No, see you on Friday. No maths tomorrow. <laughs>